Welcome to Coral Painter Essentials 8 tutorial. My name is Magdalena Proszowska. I am a digital painter, professionally working as senior concept artist from Game Dev, dedicating all my time to drawing and painting using digital media. This video is the third and final part of the painting the horse portrait. You can return to part 1 when I did the sketching and part 2 when I did the color composition. And in this part I will focus on all the details and the small elements of the final painting. So in previous one I um, block out all the colors for the shadows and highlights for the sky and the clouds. I am still trying to push and pull the color of the sky. Um, using the uh, different brushes, uh, the acryl brushes, oil brushes and blenders to uh, mix them all together and this way achieving a traditional media imitation in digital. There are also really cool experimental brushes uh, like the one that I am using right now. It's a brush called Sergeant and it's really interesting, it really pulls the color from the layer that you are working on uh, and makes a really uh, random rapid shapes. can be used for very hard edge. The part of the magic created is just happy accident, so don't be afraid to just change the brushes, experiment with the others, and see what they can bring to your picture. At some point I decided that the highlights it's not really um, doesn't have this effect of blinding that you would have when you did a photo under the sunlight. Um, so I created a new layer and using big soft airbrush uh, and white color I introduced even higher brightness in these areas uh, and this really helps uh, to make it um, absolutely overexposed. If you ever have a problem with painting at very small details, I find it very useful to just use a lasso tool to make the selection of the areas that you want to paint in and then uh, use the brush to fill it with the colors um, and uh, shade it uh, correctly. Um, this is much faster than trying to do it with a very small brush and very close up. I was interested to introduce a little bit more artistic thing uh, and by this I mean those random color, random placed strokes uh, that are actually much less about painting a realism and much more about designing the graphic of the picture. It introduces us something different, something interesting, but uh, placed properly and with the proper um, spacing and sizes can really increase the appeal of the whole thing and make it look even more traditional. You might remember that I had a, quite a problem with the size of the head in the sketch stage and I actually noticed that it's still not fitting uh, and I decided to uh, extend the neck and uh, elongate the whole posture. Um, so I used the lasso tool, cut the piece uh, that I need to move, move it um, and now uh, blending the colors to fill in the hole. Uh, so that was really lucky that I had the pieces on separate layers, otherwise it would be really hard to fill in the gaps. I am moving my work toward the very intricate details, uh, zooming in and using a really small brushes. Um, this is a little bit more a drawing than painting actually. It's a little bit like using a color pencils when um, I am not really blending colors, I am more blending them by using a line and this leaves a really nice quality to the texture of the finish and also helps uh, read the dimension and the surfaces of the uh, all elements. The work really starts to move forward very slow. Uh, it's all about 
final touches, uh, very small details that uh, if my previous steps weren't completely uh, finalized, uh, right now it will not work out. Um, so while the first stages, the sketching and uh, figuring out the colors uh, seems easy uh, and took only 20% of general uh, time I spent on the whole piece, those 20% of time basically gave me 80% of the finish. Uh, everything, uh, all the work after, the 80% work after, uh, just it's a cherry on the top. There's even more of this artistic randomness that I want to add, and those are the leaking down paints. Um, and this is just hand painted. Uh, I use a very uh, th uh, thin brush, uh, a very opaque one, and just draw the uh, vertical lines. I didn't use all of them, it was more an experiment. Uh, I just played around and at the end I decided which one are worth a living and which one are better to just remove. So far I painted only a basic looking stars, but I want to really introduce something that look like a galaxy in the background. So I will create a new layer and uh, paint a simple star and smudge it a little bit to add a softer edge to it. Um, I will then copy the layer and move it around uh, to different places and repeat with a few different arranged shapes of this uh, starry uh, night. The easy method for the small stars that I added is just to use uh, an airbrush uh, with fine spray or splatter and it takes a little bit undo redo to really nail down the proper uh, placement of them but it's super fast method to achieve a sky i later take a eraser and remove uh, the places where it's too much to make it look organic so there is still a lot of delicate work to be done uh, I am trying to make sure that there are no hard edges when they are not necessary. I am trying to blend them out either by using blenders or by or using a very small brush. Uh, I will um, crosshatch the edges uh, and make them look smoother. Um, in situation when I really require a really small brush, uh, I will even switch to a category like pencils uh, uh, or inks uh, where the brush quality is still uh, opaque and hard but I can achieve really really this one pixel with uh, brush strokes. When I decide the painting is done I will flatten the whole image and I apply extra effects to really enhance the final look. So one of the first elements is to use equalizer. Uh, and this is uh, something you may know from the other software uh, as levels. Um, this lets you uh, compress the uh, brightness of the whole picture. But you have to be delicate with it, you don't want to overdo it. Uh, it's just a small uh, thing to really control. The next step for me is to add a surface texture. Uh, and you can do it by going to Effects, Surface Control, Add a Surface Texture. Um, you can choose different paper types, uh, how strong the effect should be, the direction of the light, and even uh, adjust the general overlay color. Um, what I really want to get to is just remove the flatness of the colors, so the texture that I am looking for should be a barely noise, uh, the color noise, um, and um, I am experimenting with the color. Uh, it's maybe too much, but I think to uh, put a, uh, one tone or on the whole picture unifies the colors together better. Um, you can see I'm zooming in, so the texture is very delicate, it's just a noise, in the, uh, it's not overwhelming the painting. And the last stage is 
that uh, to add an extra sharpness. So if I decide to paint it, uh, uh, sorry, if I decide to print it, um, I will have uh, really crispy edges uh, in all spots. Thank you for joining.